game. Uh, this may be his last season as a head coach for the Kansas City Chiefs, joining some of those coaches we saw in the pregame show. But, Don, for the team, the players, there's basically no pressure. Just go out and have fun today against the Denver Broncos. Could be some for Coach Makovic. Lamar Hunt, the owner of the Kansas City Chiefs, says he'll review the whole situation after the season. Chiefs, as you see, lead the series, but they've not done well in the recent years, particularly here at Mile High Stadium. The Broncos have won eight of the last ten against Kansas City at Mile High. Rich Carlos, a young man not without his own troubles because of missed field goals this season, ready to kick it off now for the Broncos. A team that's played before sellout crowds here at Mile High Stadium for 17 years. Back deep for Kansas City. George Shorthose, a spitter from Missouri, and he's tossing not to bring it out. And so Todd Blackledge and the Kansas City offense come out. Offensive line has been beaten up a lot this year. One of the best players, Brad Buddy, still out at left guard. Bob Rush, the veteran center, playing with a bad back, but they played well last week in routing Atlanta. Wide receivers, very effective. Stephon Page and Carlos Carson. Walt Arnold's a tight end who can go deep. He's got a lot of speed. Black legend quarterback, Mike Pruitt, the former Cleveland Brown, who rushed for over 100 yards last week in the backfield with Herman Hurd. Black Ledge has started the last three games. Kansas City in this 5 and 9 season won two of them. First and 10. Going into coverage, but he gets Walt Arnold, and the tight end moves ahead to the 30 yard line for a first down. So Black Ledge, Trump gambles a bit, but he hits the man. And right now, Walt Arnold ahead for a first down for KC. Defensively across the front, Rulon Jones, Ruben Connor, and Bobby Chavis. Big Barney. Defensive left end for the Broncos. Jackson, Busick, Mecklenburg, who could be a Pro Bowl player this year, and Ryan back the line. Veteran secondaries played very well. Foley and Smith, a couple of very strong safeties. Louie right four times a Pro Bowler left corner. First down, Kansas City. Herman Hurd loses Louie Wright. The second play from scrimmage gets ahead for nine so the Chiefs two plays and 29 yards done you 19 yards we certainly documented before the ball game Dan Reeves concerned about his football team the most consistent part of this team has been the Denver Broncos defense throughout the season and when you play with pressure on your shoulders like the Broncos play today like playing in mud like swimming upstream takes a few downs for you to get into the emotion of the game Kansas City's taking advantage of it no question about that Herman Hurd, a native of Denver, Colorado, back home playing for Kansas City. It's going to be second down, and as you see, about one. Mike Pruitt gets hard and close to a second first down for Kansas City on his opening drive. These two teams played October 27th, and the Broncos won handily at Arrowhead 30 to 10. One of the problems the Kansas City Chiefs offense faces is that last week against the Raiders, Chiefs coaches told me that 72 different positions at defensive line lined up. That time, Carl Mecklenburg, 77, that combination linebacker, defensive lineman, there to make the initial hit on Mike Pruitt. Mecklenburg having a tremendous year, 12 sacks. He's forced five fumbles. His next sack will give him a team record. Right now, though, Kansas City is moving the ball very smartly early in this opening drive. No score, 13-20 to play in the first quarter. going deep. Stephon Page who caught two for touchdowns last week. Can't bring it in and so it goes as a long out. It'll be second down and ten for the Chiefs. We expected to see Henry Marshall back from that bad shoulder to start but Stephon Page with outstanding speed and you know if there's been a surprise in this Denver Bronco defensive backfield Harden has done an outstanding job throughout this season for Denver. Just kind of forced him to the sideline used the sideline as best he possibly can. And that's uh, the defensive back's biggest friend out there, that sideline. You got Stefan Page on the last one, but they'll be going back to him deep. Lone setback now is Pruitt. Extra tight ends in the game on second and ten. Blackwood's big and strong, and he's good and quick. Gets ahead out to the 44-yard line. It'll bring up third down and about six. One of the values of a guy like Carl Mecklenburg as big as he is, he can get in there with offensive linemen and still get the pass rush. And as a linebacker, he's covering the tight end. He'll drop off just a little bit. And he fakes the blitz. Now watch the quickness he gets off that blocker. 
That's great speed for a guy his size. That's why he's so versatile. There's so many things he can do. He can play any spot there, but probably weak safety. Draft day bargain, too. He came in the 12th round from Minnesota. The Terminator, the Raiders, kept him out of play for the most part. Had no sacks last week against Los Angeles. On third down and a long six. A sack right there. Coming on the blitz was Ken Woodard, an outside linebacker. Coming on a step. The leading tackler for the Broncos makes a big play on defense, an eight-yard loss. That's a delayed blitz, too. The running backs are taught to look at the linebacker, and if he doesn't show blitz right away, then release. And you can see the running back helps inside. Woodard comes untouched for the first sack of the ball game. So Todd Blackledge goes out, and the punter is on the field. Jim Arnold, the Broncos blocked two of his in the first meeting. Only two he's ever had blocked as a pro. Super fast return man signals for the fair catch, Vance Johnson. And so the Broncos offense comes out for the first time, a 43-yard punt, as you see, no return. Longtime rivals dating back to 1960 in the old American Football League. John Elway now ready to start the Broncos on offense. The Denver team picked up by the news from New Jersey that the Chicago Bears are upping their season at 14-1, beating the Jets, and that's one of the four teams the Broncos hope will lose at least two games. One of the four has to lose two, and the Broncos have to win two to get in. Walter Payton was shut down today, but the Bears weren't from. 28 carries, 53 yards, is 100 a game per 100 yard per game streak. Ends at nine. Marcus Allen right on his heels, though, with seven. Marcus will be in action tomorrow on NBC Sports against Seattle at the Los Angeles Coliseum. Watson to the left. Vance Johnson right. Elway going to put it up. He's got time. Home run ball. Vance Johnson, the fastest Bronco in history, has it tipped away at the last moment. Albert Lewis, a cornerback from Grambling who intercepted three passes a week ago against Atlanta, just broke it up. Veteran offensive line of the Denver Broncos. Very good trap blocking line for the run plays. Kay and Wright, hard blocking tight ends. Watson, a sure-handed receiver, and Vance Johnson, a burner. Winder, the lone setback for the most part for Denver. Bronco running core has been depleted. Gene Lang is out. Winder sets up way behind Elway, you see. Sammy Winder on second and ten. Deron Sherry, the free safety, number 20, came up to make the play for Kansas City. Bill Moss, having a terrific year, started at nose tackle, but because of injuries and other problems, has moved to defensive end. Holly's the middle guard. Lindstrom starts at right end. Daniels, Radisic, Blanton, and Jolly, journeyman linebackers. Some very good safety men for Kansas City. Ross is a standout corner. So is Albert Lewis. Deron Cherry's been to the Pro Bowl. Lloyd Burris, a hard-hitting safety for KC. It's now third down and about six. No score. It's the first quarter. fly long and there's no flag although Vance Chance would like to see one Kevin Ross second year man from Temple and went down to the ground as did the man the intended receiver Vance Johnson but it's a clean call probably the biggest change in the NFL officials allow this contact if both are looking back I'm going to comment here that loss last week to the Los Angeles Raiders not only affected the team, but this is as quiet as I have ever heard Mile High Stadium. Yeah, this is a rocking place usually, but today jury's out apparently in how they feel about the Broncos' chances of getting in, but it can get in a hurry. Deep man is Garcia Lane now for Kansas City. He's out to punt the ball is Chris Norman for Denver. 11.42 to play in the first quarter. Neither team able to move an inconsistency first possession. Kansas City will get good field position here. Garcia Lane goes down at his 40, and that's where KC goes on offense again. Daniel Hunter was down on the play. 37-yard punt, and we'll be back right at in Mile High Stadium, the 117th straight sellout. By those numbers, these people are used to seeing the Denver Broncos win. Denver Broncos win, but last week, the loss was so sudden. The fumble, the, the Raiders come in in the first play. They snap it, kick the field goal, game over, and possibly season over. Particularly devastating because the Broncos had the game in hand in the first half. Led 14-0 at halftime. And should have led by more than that. 
With the Raiders, as is their history, came back to win the game they had to win. Now here's Herman Hurd coming wide, and he's out to the 43-yard line. Steve Busick, inside backer, came in and made the stick for the Denver Broncos. Herman Hurd at 5'10", 186. Has rushed for almost 500 yards. He's the Chiefs' number one rusher. It's been a problem for Kansas City. They had their first 100-yard game from running back last week. The first time since 81. Yeah, 54 games. Mike Pruitt went over the 100-yard mark. 16 carries, 102 yards. That's a problem, too, for any team. If you can't give your quarterback time by that threat of the run, you get hurt. Said afterwards, we're 1-0 and in the last five years now. The Yankees had a 100-yard rush. <laughs> a play fake and Blackledge looking deep going down to Carlos Carson he's got a first down as he's out of bounds at the 35 yard line of Denver Carson has had some injury problems had a brilliant start this year a 22 yard gain his 41st Carlos catch Carson. of the year you have to respect his speed Blackledge did an excellent job even with the pressure you see that the Denver Broncos like the lineup Mecklenburg and Rulon Jones on the same side so that there's no double teaming on it and Blackledge at 6'5", almost 225 pounds. He told me before the game he's gained 10 pounds from last season. I said, why? He said, I don't know. I just feel more comfortable. I feel stronger. He is big. 6'4", about 225 pounds. He was the second quarterback drafted in that draft of 83. He came after Elway. Two running backs in between Dickerson and Kurt Warner. Here is Pruitt breaking inside the 30. Big back came in here and impressed everybody. He'd been cut by Cleveland, picked up by Buffalo, waved by the Bills. And all he wants to do is go to work, get the ball and run. As you see, he's 13th on the all-time list. And big Mike Pruitt, his 10th year from Purdue, got nine on that carry. Nice little delay run by the Kansas City Chiefs. Now Denver Broncos are struggling. They're just trying to get their mind into the football game. Everyone on the sideline is standing. Players are coming in late from the bench. They haven't had that big play yet. Last three starts, Trump. Todd Blackledge has directed Kansas City to a score on the opening drive. This is the second possession of the Chiefs, and they're moving this time. Herman Hurd off the right side. He's down to about the 23-yard line. Nick Lowry, one of the great field goal kickers ever. I think he is the all-time leader, isn't he, in percentage? And he's having another tremendous year. This kid's, up. this kid's accuracy is unbelievable. Bill Kenny on the sideline. He physically cannot play. Got a bad back and a bad elbow in northern Colorado. Incidentally, 333rd player taken in a 334 player draft in 1978 by the Miami Dolphins. He goes to the Pro Bowl in 1983. So those computers aren't all that smart. We know that Bill Kenny taking a while to get here though. Spent time with Washington also. Now it's going to be first down and 10 for Kansas City. Scoreless first quarter. Blackledge swings it out. Hurd is hit. Breaks the tackle. Got away from Jim Lyon and gets down inside the 20. So Herman Hurd's not big, but he shows some power. And Jim Ryan hears from the crowd. It turned into a seven-yard game. Several ways you can judge whether or not the team's mind is in the football game. Now Jim Ryan, normally a very, very short tackler, had Herman Hurd dead to rights. Watch, his back is to the linebacker, and Ryan still can't get a full hold on him. That's good effort by Herman Hurd and very poor tackling by Jim Ryan. We have 8.42 to play in the first quarter. There's no score that keeps driving. Mike Pruitt gets some as he's down to the 15-yard line. This is a sure shot from in here if the drive stalls for Nick Lowry. The confidence level is building for Todd Blackledge Trump. His quarterback coach, Pete McCulley, told him when he first got the starting job four games ago, he said, quarterbacks are like tea bags. You don't find out how strong they are to get them in hot water. <laughs> Tell you another thing about Todd Blackledge, uh, he is a streak thrower. Uh, last week, he completed his first seven. And when things start going his way, that, that confidence for a young guy just, just builds and builds and builds. And all of a sudden, he's a tough quarterback for any team to handle. But all the adversity of being a starter, then being cold and being on the bench has helped him now because he's much more confident. He thinks he can do it as Pruitt goes. Short yardage play, and he's going to be very close to the first down. And I'll tell you another factor with uh, Todd Blackledge. Not only does he get a chance to play these games, but the most important point is starting quarterbacks in the NFL take about 90% of the work during the week. So when they assign him the starting position, he got 90% of yeah. the work during the week. Watching him at practice yesterday, he looked very sharp. They ran a lot of rollouts. He's a very mobile quarterback. 
Big and strong played for Joe Paterno with Penn State. Going to go down to that Orange Bowl game when the Nittany Lions go for the national championship. The game you'll see here on NBC Sports. Going against that powerhouse team from Oklahoma the night of January 1st, 1986. Now Nick Lowry comes out. He's tried 24 field goals this season. He's hit 21. Tell you what, this kid has never missed in his career inside 30 yards either. That's not a bad streak, huh? So this is a 32-yarder. This is this is a gimme putt. He's made his last last eight in competition. Nick Lowry with eight different teams out of Dartmouth before he finally stuck and he's a Pro Bowl kicker. Different kickers aim at different places coming before the game. He aims way up on the scoreboard. He wants to put it up high and through the middle. And getting it up, he said, is the key. You get it up, it's going to go long. This one doesn't have to. Gets it up, and Nick Lowry's right on time again with 7.21 to play. The underdog Kansas City Chiefs put the first points up. They take a 3 nothing lead on... This is Don Cricky back at Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado. 7.21 to play in the first quarter. The Chiefs just hit a 32-yard field goal. Nick Lowry got his first points of the day, and it's 3-0 Kansas City. Lowry hits a very high kickoff. Vance Johnson, the sprinter from Arizona, takes it across the 20. Johnson is out to the 32-yard line. At halftime today, when we go to NFL 85, Matt Costas and the crew will be visiting, among others, with Mike Singletary, all-pro middle linebacker for the Chicago Bears, who, if you haven't heard, beat the Jets today 19-6. Bears extending their record to 14-1, the best in football. The Jets now on the ropes. They have to win next week against Cleveland. To this point, John Elway now 0 of 2. One, of course, was a very deep pass. The Denver Broncos right now got to go to the run. They got to establish, establish something at the line of scrimmage to get the, the lethargy out. John Elway, as you see, stacks his two wide receivers, now brings Watson in motion. Play fake into Winder. Quick out. They go to the speed. And the Broncos get ahead for a gain on the throw to Vance Johnson out to the 37 yard line. Gain of five. Dan Reeves in his fifth year, his Broncos have won 75% of the time at Mile High Stadium. As you see, he's the winningest Bronco coach in history. I think he knows what to do also. He knows how to handle John Elway, knows how to handle adversity. He's going to be here for a long time, and this team's going to win a lot of games. That's a good point. He can handle the winning and the losing. Learned under a master, Tom Landry. End off goes to Winder, and he breaks it up the middle. He's across midfield. A big gain for the Denver Broncos. A gain of 15 yards by Sammy Winder. But the Bronco offense gets on track. Deron Cherry on the tackle. This is a nice little pop up through the middle. And this is what the Denver Broncos need. It's a trap, and they execute it perfectly. And Winder, who had arthroscopic surgery, what, two weeks ago? Didn't miss a game because of it. If there's one thing the Denver Broncos have needed this season, it's a Sammy Winder running for a thousand yards. Take the pressure off the passing game. Unfortunately, they haven't gotten it. Sammy can catch it too. Comes in with 31 catches. Winder. First down carry. He takes it to the Kansas City 43-yard line. Got four on the play. John Makovic, the Kansas City coach, followed Dan Reeves as offensive coordinator, head of the passing game at Dallas. When Reeves came to Denver, Makovic went to Dallas from Wake Forest, where his head coach. Now in his third season. Five twenty-three to play. First quarter, and Kansas City's in the lead, three to nothing. To Winder and almost breaks it. Keeps come hitting, but Sammy breaks one and then two and finally gets down close to the 35 yard line. A gain of eight and a first down for Denver. Once again, Duran Cherry on the tackle. That means that your linebackers and your linemen are, the defensive linemen are not doing the job. You turn a running back loose on a safety. This is exactly what the Denver Broncos needed now establish some control of the line of scrimmage with some good running plays winder now four carries 32 yards Sammy's run the ball Sammy winder four times 32 as you mentioned and Sewell now 
Now the rookie number one from Oklahoma takes it inside the 30 down to the 29 yard line. Seven yard gain for Sewell as the trap blocking up front of Denver offensive line specialist brings Sewell for seven. Doing an excellent job. Notice the Denver Broncos are also using in their offensive lineup Mark Cooper, a guard. A young man who is out of uh, Miami of Florida, 6'6", 200, and uh, close to 75 pounds. Excellent puller. Kansas City defense had seven sacks against Atlanta. Albert Lewis, a corner, had three interceptions. They really shut down Atlanta's offense as Elway now on second and four. Throws a strike. Vance Johnson down to the 18-yard line. Ron Cherry gets him, but it's an 11-yard pickup. And Johnson, a spectacular athlete from Arizona. The running back there, the fastest Bronco ever, as we mentioned. He was the NCAA long jump champion one year. 26 feet, 11 and a half inches. So it's a great job of just finding the dead spot in that zone. Radisek on the inside, Cherry on the outside. And John Elway with a good play action fake. Held those linebackers. That's a nice reception by Vance Johnson. And the crowd starts to pick up here at Mile High Stadium. Broncos trailing Kansas City 3-0. Winder makes it down to the 15-yard line. The left guard, Keith Bishop. Another fine trap block, and there's a gain of four. Broncos still, though, swimming upstream here. They're trying to get something going. It's hard to erase a, a loss like last week, no matter what your coach tells you, and no matter what you read in the press, and how you feel, and whether or not you had a great game, it's really hard to get that loss out of your mind. So much has to happen right for Denver to get in the playoffs. They have to win. Most importantly, that's four much. And here's Winder, and he's working on that get-ahead score as he's down to the 10-yard line. Second down, Terry's going to bring up third and short. On the tackle was Duran Cherry, a gain of five for Sammy Winder. Once again, safeties for the Kansas City Chiefs making the tackles, and Duran Cherry still on the ground. That's one thing that that double tight end offense allows the Denver Broncos. From, uh, from the alignment, you have no idea which way the Denver Broncos are going, run or pass. So you can't really set a strong safety or a weak safety to stop them. Last week, Trump in Kansas City's 38-10 win over Atlanta. They held the Falcons to just 93 yards rushing. Sammy Winder already has 40 yards running today in the first quarter for Denver. But Kansas City's in the lead, 3-0. Short yardage is going to be close, but did he get there? Had to get it down to the nine-yard line. Very close, and the Denver fans not particularly happy with that call. In addition to leading all the quarterbacks in rushing, he has an excellent per carry average, 5.5. John Elway might be at his best when he's scrambling. A lot of people feel that if you can keep John Elway in the pocket, that's where, if he has a weakness, it shows. On the roll, though, as you say, he is absolutely deadly. Ooh, tough choice here for Dan Reeves. Do you go for it, or do you go for the field goal? Fourth well, down comes up for the Denver Broncos. They trail by three. Carlos has had his problems, as you know, the field goal kicker for Denver. Offense is staying up. They're going to pound the ball at him. Now, I think this could go a long way towards, one, getting the crowd into the ball game, two, taking some of the pressure off the Denver offense or the Denver team. Look, John Elway is exhorting the crowd. Come on, cheer a little bit. Give us a little bit of credit here. So the Broncos are going to go for it. Everybody loves a gambler till he loses. We'll see if all those grandstand quarterbacks back the Broncos if they don't get there. I formation, power set, three tight ends in. Second back is third, and he's ahead for a Denver first down. Gets down to the seven. So the Broncos drive on. First cheer of the day for the Denver Broncos. Their fans, yeah, they like the choice now. They don't want to make the choice, but they like the choice from behind the defense. Good power blocking. Offensive linemen get leverage. Get underneath those defensive linemen. Good lead block by a winder. On Blanton, you see Blanton driving over there. A hand on the face mask, no call. Denver Broncos first down. Ball down to the seven-yard line where it's first and goal Denver. Here's Winder on the run with the Broncos trailing 3-0. Coming across to make the play was Bill Moz, the left end, who had a standout season at nose tackle, moved to left end when Art still went down. The other defensive end also out, Mike Bell. Moss playing great wherever they put him. A loss of two on that play. He's Dan Marino's brother-in-law. 
Watch the pursuit by the inside of the Kansas City Chiefs defense. Moss does an excellent job of getting off the block. It's Winder down for a loss of two yards. A lot of teams, when they get down in this situation, in my estimation, outsmart themselves. They continually run to the side as opposed to going right at them. And this first quarter is about to come to an end with the Denver Broncos' second goal. Second and goal, but through the first 15 minutes, the underdog Chiefs have taken a 3-0 lead. Denver will try to punch it in when we come back. The underdog Chiefs have a 3-0 lead, but the Broncos seem to have some spark now, Mr. Trump. Yeah, I think that fourth down conversion helped a little bit. Uh, as strange as this sound, Don, I think Dan Reed would like to have accelerators on all his players that right now he could just push to the floor. Unfortunately, they don't have that. There's no turbo boost on these players, so they got to fight through this first part of the football game. They've suffered with this all week long, pretty even in the first quarter stats. This is without question the best drive for the Denver Broncos, but second down quite a bit for a touchdown here. John Elway, whose quarterback victories in 21 of his last 28 starts, only Marino's better than that, throws in the flat. James Wright, a tight end, takes it down to the four-yard line. And that brings up third and goal from the four. A five-yard pickup on the play as the Chiefs get tough on defense down close. Chiefs doing an excellent job of clogging up the middle so that there's no place for Elway to throw the ball. And the other thing they're doing is, in that particular instance, they kept their pass rush lane. So John Elway could not roll out, which certainly adds to the offense of the Denver Broncos. Big Jim Wright, he's a blast blocker, as is Clarence K. That's their strong suit, although they've caught more balls this year. Denver now with four wide receivers, Don. Yeah, well, as you see in the shotgun on third and goal from the four. Fastball broken up in the end zone. Is it picked off? Yes. It is. Greg Hill. All right, says Coach Makovic. They were going to Steve Watson, and Greg Hill got it. Fourth-year player from Oklahoma State. From the triple side of the formation, Watson just runs a little slant. Hill does an excellent job of getting underneath Watson. Cleanly catches it. Drive stalled. Denver still trying to break out of the lethargy. And John Makovic, to say the least, very, very happy. Talk about an emotional damper. That's one down close and no points. 13th play in the drive. Unlucky for Dan for quarterback John Elway as he's picked off by Greg Hill. In Kansas City coming out to their 20 down to go. First and 10. The Chiefs are in the lead 3-0. Chicago Bears beat the Jets today, 19-6. Blackledge, home run, Stephon Page, open ball tipped away by all pro Lewis Wright. Mr. Wright. Louie, they chanted mile high as with 14-41 to play in the first half. Very nearly a big hit for the Chiefs on offense. Historically, that's the way Louie Wright's played the position. He'll stay right with that receiver and then at the last minute get his hands in there, and that's what he does. Very sure-handed, very athletic. Kansas City Chiefs that time had a little half roll to avoid some of the pass rush. Rolling away from Rulon Jones and Carl Mecklenburg. Rolling to the right for Blackledge. Very nearly his sixth interception, Louis Wright. Now second down and ten for the young quarterback of the Chiefs, Todd Blackledge. Herman Hurd. Throw it, gives him a big block. Hurd gets out to the 27-yard line. Big Mike Pruitt at 225 just blew away a linebacker, and that gave Herman Hurd the room to run for seven. That time, the Denver Broncos gave another defensive look. They had the near side defensive end. Rulon Jones outside, that Busick inside. And that's the way the Kansas City Chiefs ran. Every down that the Kansas City Chiefs go to the line of scrimmage, they will look at a different defensive front from Kansas City. So far, they've solved those defensive fronts. Talked about they ran 72 different defensive yes. looks at the Raiders. Yes. The big boys from L.A. handled it in the end once again as they took command of the AFC West. Big game to mount NBC Sports. Raiders in Seattle. Here's a clean throw over the middle, and Carlos Carson is on the run. And Carson's all the way across midfield of the 48-yard line of Denver. Sprinter from LSU, a 26-yard reception, breaking right into the middle of the zone, wide open. Don, that was the same play, the same formation that the Denver Broncos ran that was intercepted. They had triple receivers on the far side of the field. 
Watch, Carson just comes underneath. Louis Wright's the man in single coverage. And linebackers, the Denver Broncos came with a blitz. No coverage underneath, and he was wide open. Bronco linebackers oftentimes are smaller than usual, but they're very quick and aggressive. That's the way defensive coordinator Joel Kalia likes them. And now, first down, Pruitt gets the call. Mike Pruitt, proven to people he still has some playing days left, takes it down to the 47-yard line. Greg Cragen came up to make the stop for Denver. Game clock down to 13.30 to run in the first half. And the Kansas City Chiefs to this point, with 13.30 to go in the first half, have not allowed the Denver Bronco fans in the game at all. I mean, one little cheer for the fourth down conversion has been it. They sit in stunned silence. Kansas City in the midst of a five and nine season that includes seven straight losses. Winners of two of their last three and looking sharp today with a three nothing lead. Her running hard, a motivated team. There was question how hard they'd come out, but the Chiefs playing hard. Now they move it on a second and nine play down to the 44 yard line. Carl Mecklenburg on the tackle. Herman Hurd almost fumbled that ball. Didn't get it cleanly from Todd Blackledge. He makes the pickup. John Makovic's Chiefs got off to a great start in 85. Blew out New Orleans in New Orleans. Five days later, routed the Raiders 36 to 20. Lost at Miami, then came back to beat Seattle 28 to 7. We're off to a 3 and 1 start, and then came seven straight losses and an unreal rash of injuries, which led in great measure to those losses. Now, Blackledge from his 44, pumping long. Carson can't get to it at the 5. One thing about Kansas City, but they're going for it. They don't mind throwing it deep, do they? And the thing about Blackledge, he has a very accurate long arm. He does. He very accurate. Throw long. He said that yesterday at practice that he feels more comfortable going for the long routes because he's got people who can get open long. Tony Lilly, second year man from Florida, is back now as Jim Arnold punts the ball. Didn't put the rush on, as we mentioned earlier. Broncos did block two Jim Arnold punts. Here is a Kansas City hop that they'll dump, drop it at the six yard line, and that's where they'll be pinned back. Broncos will go on offense, but in a difficult position after a 37-yard punt. So with 12.08 to play, it's still the Chiefs by three. With Bob Trumpy back at Mile High Stadium in Denver, the Kansas City Chiefs and a first-quarter field goal by Nick Lowry lead the heavily favored Denver Broncos 3-0, the game the Broncos must win to stay in the playoff chase. Now a punt by Arnold has pinned the Broncos in their own end as they go first and ten. Tries the right side of the Kansas City defense. Gets it out to about the 11-yard line for a gain of three. Not the Denver Broncos struggling in the first part of this football game. But field position hasn't helped. They started at their own 21, their own 32, their own 20. And this drive starts at their own eight. John Elway at any time can air it out. He will go deep from deep in his own end. And he's got the flyer out in the left flank. Vance Johnson to go deep. Watson to the near side. Sewell on second and seven gets to the 13-yard line. Bill Moss jamming things up for Kansas City. Has certainly made an easy transition from nose tackle to defensive end. Actually, not quite as busy out there at defensive end. When you play nose tackle, you got two or three people on you. This is a trap bishop coming. Moss just throws him off. Moss there to disrupt the run a little bit. But it brings up third down at about four for Denver. Clock down to 11 minutes to play in the first half. Chiefs in the lead by three. Elway swings it out to Sewell. Broncos bring him down at about the 16-yard line. Not enough. Short, yeah, yeah, not enough for a first down. When he juked a little bit there, that cost him the first down. Times as a player, you just got to put your head down and take your chances. But Blanton. And Deron Jerry there to make the tackle on an attempted screen for very little game. Norman comes out to punt again now. Steve Sewell who caught that pass was called Dan Reeves calling the best back he'd ever seen coming out of the backfield that was eligible in the draft. That time he comes up short swinging out. It's fourth and one. Back to return the punt is Garcia Lane. Oh, 
very mild December day. They had rough weather all week in the Mile High City, but today it's in the 40s. Clear and sunny. Ball hit downfield by Norman. Lane will bring it back from his 40. And again, Kansas City starts out on offense in good field position with 9.51 to play in the first half. Blackledge comes out a 44-yard punt and 11-yard return. Oxygen a little thin up here, mile high. They tried to start a wave here, Trump, but yeah. nothing happened. A few minutes ago, I would have mistaken this place for the Denver Public Library. Somebody went, shh, and everybody listened. Stands usually the most boisterous in the National Football League are among them. Very enthusiastic fans, very quiet today, waiting for the Broncos to show something. Underdog Kansas City has a 3-0 lead in the second quarter. Herman Hurd on a first down run takes it to the 46-yard line where Andre Townsend knocked him down. There are a lot of teams that when they come into Denver or win to Seattle, they have begun to employ what's called a silent snap count. And the silent snap count is that the center just snaps it when it appears everybody is ready. Normally the team goes from an up position. The quarterback goes with his hand set to take the ball whenever the center's ready. And there is no rhythmic count or anything. The Kansas City Chiefs felt they'd have to employ that today. They could whisper the signals and get the message across. Quarterbacks having no problems hearing their signals heard today, though. It's been quiet at the Mile High City as Pruitt runs the ball hard and takes it down close to the 40-yard line. Second down and seven run. Going to bring up third down at about three. Big Carl Mecklenburg, 77. All over the place. At times, it looks like there's more than one 77 out there. Now watch him. He doesn't take a false step. He knows right where that play is going. Takes on the pulling guard of the Kansas City Chiefs, Bob Olderman. Right there to assist on the tackle. Mecklenburg comes out. Barney Chavis now goes in as the Denver Broncos appear to be going with their goal line defense on his third and short. Kansas City has been controlling the ball in the clock. 8.30 to play in the first half, and the Chiefs still holding that first quarter lead that they build up on the Nick Lowry field goal, 3-0. Yes. Arnold's going deep. Oh, it's overextended as they're going for the ball was Herman Hurd. Lowry, the tight end, running a fly. Blackledge went to the shorter pattern. The Chicago Bears back on track. Today they beat the Jets 19 to 6 at Giant Stadium in New Jersey. The playoff picture changes a bit as the Jets go to 10 and 5 and the pressure builds for a very big game. They'll play next Sunday against the Cleveland Browns. Still very much in the hunt to win the AFC Central. Cleveland and Cincinnati, of course, one of those teams guaranteed a spot in the playoffs because they'll win the division. Jim Arnold hits the punt downfield. And again, it takes a Kansas City hop and they'll down it inside at the 15-yard line. Boy, oh boy. Nothing's going right for Denver here. Bad field position. Ball is bouncing Kansas City's way. Back at the Mile High Stadium, we remind you there are some great games coming up tomorrow in NBC Sports. The Seahawks go against the Raiders at Los Angeles. And a big game with your old team, Bob Trumpy. The Bengals looking good. Go to Washington. Not an easy place to win. Playing very well. It's uh, difficult for the Denver Broncos to play right now. Bad field position. Quick out goes to Sampson, but not much happened. They got ahead for some. Now they're going to spot the ball. It's a pretty good gain, actually, out across it to the 22-yard line as the clock ticks down to 7.52 to play. To this point, a big factor in this football game. From your own 19-yard uh, line, you can only use about 10% of your offense. And with the way Arnold has been putting in the bounces he's gotten, Denver's facing first and 85 every time they take the field. Samson in now is one wide receiver replacing Vance Johnson. Watson's in, hasn't caught a ball yet. You recall the one they threw him in the end zone was intercepted, stopping a long Denver drive. Kansas City still leads the game three to nothing with 7.20 to play in the first half. At halftime, we'll be going to NFL 85 among the guests. Middle linebacker for the Chicago Bears, Mike Singletary, the hub of that defense. Samurai, they call him in Chicago. I have a suggestion for Mile High Stadium. I think if they put up the Chicago Bear New York Jet score, it might help just to get the people out of their seats here and help this team as best they possibly can. There's Dan Reeves. Albert Lewis starting corner for Kansas City is out with having his neck checked. Blitz is picked up. Now Elway on the run. Miles trying to run him down. He cannot. Elway heads for the 12th man and gets out of bounds. 
Big Bill Myers flushed him. First down run by John Elway gets some, not much. You can see Myers at the bottom of the screen. Normally a nose tackle, but has made a very nice adjustment. He's on Kendall and near. Look at that arm strength. And then the foot race. Elway's going to win this one, but Moss doesn't give up. Until Elway gets to the sideline. Lloyd Burris finally runs him out after a four-yard game. Albert Lewis out at least temporarily with a bruised left shoulder, we're told, with 6.38 to play in the first half. Broncos failing, the underdog Chiefs 3-0. Strike by Elway gets Big James right out to the 34-yard line. It'll bring up third and about a yard. Inside backers Radisick and Blant were on the stop for Kansas City. Denver Broncos more than happy right now to go with a sustaining drive, going with the short stuff. Just the uh, Chiefs running an awful lot of zone coverage. His receivers got to find the dead spots. Elway took a shot in the chest there. It looked like he was uh, grasping for some air. I still can't believe how quiet it is here. John Elway is going to set a single season Denver passing record, but the Broncos have not had a receiver with a 100 yard game this year. Marker goes down as Sewell runs for a first down yardage, but we'll see who the call goes against. Two markers down, stopping the clock with 5.48 to play in the first half. That's the first flag on either team that we've had so far in this game. And I believe it's going against Denver. Oh, it's going against Kansas City. A first down. Looks like Duran Cherry first was shaking up. Number 50 on the defense. First down. That kind of surprised me. You know, it looked like James Wright moved early too. Duran Cherry getting up limping. They need him. One of their toughest tacklers in that defensive backfield. Free agent from Rutgers who's been a Pro Bowl starter. Mark Robinson comes in the game now, replacing Duran Cherry, going out with an apparent ankle. He's walking it off, though. John Elway has passed Craig Morton. Frank Rapuca from the early years of the Broncos when the stripes on the socks were vertical and they were burned one day at midfield. Good. <laughs> Cheers to the fans. Good. John Elway has been highly criticized here in uh, Denver for his performance this season, but this is a record-breaking offense for the 1985 Denver Broncos. John Elway, a big part of that. Elway comes in with 20 touchdown passes, 18, now 19 interceptions after the one that was picked up in that earlier drive. Steve Sewell on first and 10, lets it go long, a poorly thrown ball, and nobody can get it. Let Elway throw him from now on. Yeah, intended for Clint Sampson. I'm sure he, Steve Sewell, threw the ball a lot better in practice. This is Mark Robinson. He's the man in coverage, but like he was lobbing a grenade. Yeah, Clint Sampson already had built up too much speed to come back for it. Well, they'll say it worked good in practice. It didn't work so well in the game. Denver got help from the Chicago Bears today with their victory over the New York Jets 19 to 6 but the Broncos haven't done too much to help themselves at least so far. Failing underdog Kansas City 3 nothing in the second quarter. 518 to play in the half. John Elway sees something he doesn't like in the defense so he goes over for some counsel and we take this ball. Their opposition by a decisive margin in the first half and today they've outscored nobody. Chiefs lead the game three nothing in the third quarters where Denver's had real problems. They've not scored a point in the third quarter in the last seven games. Kansas City holding to a three nothing lead as Elway takes the deep drop and Sewell blockers in front. Steve Sewell taken down in an open field tackle. He'd have gone a long way. Kevin Ross, a rising star at cornerback, got him. It was a 15-yard gain though and a first down for Denver. Don, you can see. Dan Reeves is trying desperately to shake his team out here. Middle screen, not a, a play that's run a lot by any team, but he's trying anything he possibly can to put some spark in this offense, just get his team off the ground. Good second look from the end zone. Our producer today for NBC Sports is George Finkel. Our director, John Gonzalez. This is Don Cricky with back Trumpy. 4.38 as you see to play in the first half. 
Kansas City on defense leading 3-0. Elway throwing hard again, and Watson can't hold on at the 30. Lloyd Burris almost had a play on the ball. That ball was overthrown. We pause five seconds for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Don, one of the things I'll tell you about uh, being a receiver for John Elway, as a receiver, because he throws it so hard, you must see the ball leave his hands. That time, Watson had no chance to see the ball leave his hands, and it gets there so quickly you can't adjust. Which Johnson, who hasn't been in yet, calls it catch and blurs when Elway drills it as hard as he can. Might have to hear. He dropped. Long out, and Watson has his first reception, and he gets a first down for Denver, down to the 31-yard line. 15-yard gain, so the Broncos drive out on the Elway throw. Greg Hill in coverage, and you can see that when Elway has time and the receiver can also see the ball released from the quarterback's hands, it is very easy to catch a John Elway pass. Some you have to stop, no question about it. And on this one, he looks down the middle, and look, Hill's not that far off. That's not bad coverage. Elway's still able to get it there in time for a big 15-yard pickup and a first down. 54th catch of the year for Steve Watson. But four for touchdowns. They went to him once in the end zone today, and it was intercepted to stop a Denver drop. It still breaks into open field. Big back from uh, Oklahoma takes it down to the 21-yard line. A first down carry appears to be just about enough for a first down. And again, Deron Cherry on the tackle. The offensive line of the Denver Broncos now doing a good job. They're influencing a certain degree here. You see offensive tackle Howard just drawing Bill Moss back. That's, some people call that a collapsed dive. You know, a lot of times defensive linemen are blind when they when they rush into the guy. All they do is fight pressure. Howard set him up. Second down and less than a yard now for Denver. Broncos trailing 3 nothing. as Sewell breaks it down to the 15-yard line. Running that stand-up style, and then he goes down like he tripped down something. He's getting caught with low tackles. Pete Koch got him that time. One thing about uh, Steve Sewell, though, he does get to the line of scrimmage in a flat hurry, doesn't he? Big and rangy, very fast. 6'3", 210. John Makovic's Chiefs, winners of two of their last three. The Chiefs out of the playoffs again this season. Open for an upset as Sewell is cut down on a first down carry. There was a loss of about two yards on the play. Shooting the gap to get him was outside linebacker Ken Jolly, 52. Well, this is certainly a must situation for the Denver Broncos. That's Gary Kubiak to the left of Dan Reeves. He motions a two-minute warning. John Elway will come to the sideline for counsel. Chiefs haven't been to the playoffs since 1971. Hank Stram was the coach then. They were still staying, uh, playing in the old Harrowhead Stadium. The old Metropolitan. Is that, what it, is that what it's called? Sir, as um, Elway comes over for some advice, we take a break. Two minutes to play in the first half at Denver, Colorado. The underdog Chiefs leading Denver 3 0 in a game the Broncos must win to stay in playoff contention. Denver now with another deep drive. They had one earlier that ended in an interception in the end zone. Had the ball a long time here. The last time they drove the 13th play, though, was the one that was intercepted. 3-0 Chiefs. Elway on second and 12. Throws underneath the zone. Watson gets it. He's down to about the 12-yard line. It's forward progress. Gain of five on the play. Blanton and Daniels, two linebackers, knocked him back. Surprising, though, Don, that the play appears to be designed to only go four or five yards deep. It's a delay underneath. No one was fooled. Calvin Daniels right there to assist on the tackle, along with Blanton. Now brings up third down and about six yards for the Denver Broncos. John Elway, career Trump, has not done well versus Kansas City in four career games. He has only one touchdown pass and has thrown seven interceptions. He has one today. So in five games, one touchdown pass and eight interceptions. Here's the blitz. He gets it away. He's got his man. It's touchdown Denver. Vance Johnson sprints off the flank and just beats the coverage with flat out speed. And the Broncos with 1.14 to play in the first half take a 6-3 lead out of an 11-yard scoring play. Elway did an outstanding job there, John. Stood at the line of scrimmage, had plenty of time to read what Kansas City was doing, read the blitz. You can see the safeties coming. 
He doesn't see it completed. Johnson runs a good pattern. 31 was the man in coverage. Kevin Ross right on the money. Denver finally on the board. Gary Kubiak to hold. Rich Carlos to try to point after he's missed three this season, but not that one. So the Broncos with an impressive 13 play, 85 yard drive, take the lead 7 to 3. As a penalty marker down, we'll wait to see what referee Red Cashin has to say. Offside, number 23 on the defense, point count, 5 yards on the kickoff. So the extra point goes, and the Broncos will take it off the lead. Halftime, we go to NFL 85. Mike Singletary, the Chicago Bear middle linebacker, will be among the guests. Some very big games coming up at NBC Sports tomorrow. The Bengals back in the hunt after losing their first five go to Washington. Most of you as the doubleheader game will see the Seattle Seahawks rising again, going against the hot Raiders at Los Angeles. It's here the Broncos must win, and they've taken the lead late in the first half. 114 to play in the half, and the Broncos had the lead for the first time, 7-3. John Elway's 21st touchdown pass of the season, 11 yards out to Vance Johnson. Blacklegs working quickly from the shotgun, swings it to Hurd. Open field hit is put on by Hardman. A penalty marker goes down in the Denver secondary. Nice play. Well, well done by Mike Hardman. Reuben Carter, also the nose tackle, the illegal man downfield. Always a problem you might. You, times have on a screen pass this one will come back that was well done Denver now going with the prevent defense they're running a three deep zone they'll give Kansas City anything number 77 of the offense was illegally downfield Italy is the line second down Rich Baldinger called for the infraction with 104 to play in the first half it's now turning into a clear cold day in Denver the heat is on. Dan Reeves and his Broncos, though, despite a 9-5 record coming in. They have to win today. Or they'll be home by the hot for the playoffs. The Broncos have to beat this Kansas City team that did not come here to lose, despite the fact they'll not be in the playoffs. And for leading 7-3 with just over a minute to play in the first half. The give to Ethan Horton, number one draft choice of the Chiefs. He gets out close to the 25-yard line, a gain of six on the play. Denver takes a timeout. They're hoping to get the ball back with some time on the clock. The day starts with NFL 85 and then into some very big games, including the Bengals and the Redskins at Washington. Tony Viteri from the NFL office here, a longtime official. Homie Trump, he thinks the Bengals are one of the best-looking teams in the league right now. Offense, they can score on anybody. It's just a matter of how the defense plays this week. Uh, Bengals generally play against good, tough, hard-nosed football teams like uh, the Washington Redskins. Uh, they beat up on the Dallas Cowboys. I guarantee it. They're flying high right now. Some guys would like to beat up on each other. Yeah. Seattle and the Raiders. Gary Fensick, the veteran free safety for the Chicago Bears, will be the guest on NFL 85 tomorrow. Dan Reeves takes a look out. His team started slowly, but now they've come to the front 7-3 to three with 57 seconds to play in the first half. Todd Blackledge, out of that quarterback class of 83, getting his fourth consecutive start and doing well for the most part. Now, now the Denver Broncos have to change their defense. They got third and five here. They can't go with the prevent. They got to try to force the thing. Kansas City just one of five in third down conversions. And if they can at least get an incompletion here, they're going to get the ball with some time left on the clock. Yeah, they have changed their defense. Herman Hurd trying to turn the corner. Broncos there again. Hyden 31 was the first man up. Joe Talia wants his defense to call timeout now with 49 seconds to play in the half. Now remember the last time these two teams met, Arnold had two punts blocked. Robbins got both of them. The only two punts Arnold has ever had blocked in his career. Certainly a good time to go after it here. And a good time to remind you that this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Denver Broncos and the National Football League is prohibited. Randy Robbins was the guy who got Arnold the last time in Kansas City. Got him twice. Got him twice. And even if you don't block the punt, at least if you bother him a little bit, 
You hope for a shank or you hope for one that's short, and that certainly is going to help your offense. It was a different game the first time they met on October 27th. The Broncos built up a 24-0 lead. And Arnold, with almost 300 career punts, had two blocked by that man, 48, Randy Robbins, in the game. Only two that have ever been blocked. is going to be cut down right at the 20 on a very fine special teams play. Mark Robinson came down 55-yard punt and just a one-yard return. So the Broncos get it back with not much time and a long way to go. 38 seconds to go in the first half. An interesting choice there by the Denver Broncos not to even fluster Jim Arnold at all. Just let him stand back there and bang out a 56-yard officially in a 56-yard punt. I'd have gone after that one, I think. See what Elway can get done now in 38 seconds. He can make it happen fast. John Elway coming in with a 70 quarterback rating. Rates near the middle of the American Conference quarterbacks. But when you total up wins, John Elway's been a big winner. Mentioned 21 of his last 28 stops for Denver have ended in Denver victories. Put it right up from the shotgun to start this series. Blitz. Picked up. Elway goes, and it's a drop ball. Coming out of the backfield was Sammy Winder, but he tried to turn up field before he got it. So with 32 seconds left to go in the half, it's second down and 10. Absolutely wide open he was, too. That was a well-orchestrated play. Winder out of the backfield just cleared everybody. The receivers cleared everybody out. Winder open underneath. Elway likes to run and shoot. He'll take off out of that shotgun formation and throw from a sprint out. Four wide receivers in the game. Steve Sewell aligned as a wing back. He's going deep. Elway throws. It skips off Sewell's hands at the 25. So it'll be third down and 10 for Denver with just 28 seconds to play in the half. I'm telling you, this is no fun to be in a position like this as a player. Just swimming against the current playing like your feet are in mud that way now 10 of 16 a touchdown and an interception 85 yards total in the first half and, and you don't know what's wrong as a player you're out there you're trying to give it your level best but you're not just not getting it done see what they can get done here now as Elway again sends that spread formation out third down and 10 for Denver Sewell takes it. Stick him at the 27-yard line. He's well short of the first down. Clock ticking down, and now Kansas City finally calls a timeout as they'll get the ball on a punt after just a six-yard run. Chiefs could have some time to get in field goal range. Yeah, now we'll see if the Chiefs will choose to at least put pressure on Chris Norman. Seventeen seconds to go in the half. The American Conference West, rated as, if not the toughest, certainly one of the toughest divisions in the NFL. The Raiders at top with a 10 and 4 record. Denver at 9 and 5. Seattle with an 8 and 6 mark. Seattle's been 2, 2 and 2 all year. Two wins, two losses, two wins, two losses, two wins. On and on and on. Interesting that you mentioned maybe the toughest conference or division. There are only two divisions in the NFL who have winning records outside their division. The NFC East and the AFC West. And the AFC West has the best winning percentage in 1985 against non-division opponents. And the Chiefs are going to try to block this punt, Don. Got 10 men up. Garcia Lane, the lone man back for Kansas City. 17 seconds to play in the first half. near it. Garcia Lane will run it back though. Robbins misses him. And they get it out to the 41 yard line with seven seconds left. 37 yard punt, a five yard return, but the big number there, the eight seconds left in the half. Try one play, maybe a long out and try to get it in range for long range bomber Nick Lowry. He can hit it deep. Sure can. One of the most accurate kickers long range that the NFL has ever had. This will make the Denver Broncos now play the defense pretty honest. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six defensive backs, two linebackers, and three defensive linemen on the rush. 
Todd Blackledge stands back in the shotgun at his 35. Looking long. He can fire on the run. He does. Gets a strike. And Anthony Hancock, in his wisdom, runs it to the middle of the field and runs out the clock. Not very smart. So that'll do it for the first half. And Reeves and the Broncos go off. Coach Reeves not overly thrilled by the first half happenings, but it is a 7-3 advantage. NFL 85 is coming up as Denver leading Kansas. Great year. See what the Chiefs can get going.